Um, praise the Lord that, uh, that you've come out to his house today. I'm going to be in Matthew chapter 18. Uh, there is some various Bibles in the pews. If you haven't brought yours, uh, feel free to help yourself. Uh, if not, we'll just be covering a couple of verses. And you can just listen along if you would like. Matthew chapter 18. And as always, if you have found your place uh, to reverence the reading of God's word in his house, please stand this morning as we read his holy word. Amen. Everyone standing as we begin to read. Matthew chapter 18. And we'll finish the rest of the book of Matthew in our reading. You awake this morning? Amen. That's a joke, people. We ain't going through all those chapters. Amen? Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the middle of them, and said, Verily or truly I say to you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Father in heaven, Lord, we, we thank you, we glorify you and praise you here this morning for the work that you've let us do this week with these children we thank you, but Father, we also thank you for your precious holy word. Father, we thank you for this truth that you have revealed to us, that we may be saved by thy word and live by thy word. Father, for we know that you care for us and love, love us, and you would desire the best for us. For it's in Christ's name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. You know, it's amazing we can get so busy in the church. Now, i got to tell you this before I get started. I did promise April no more than a 10-minute sermon. I've never been able to do that in my life, so bear with me. Amen? At the same time, here comes the disciples. and You know, we get so busy in the church. We get busy teaching. Whether you want to teach discipleship or theology or salvation or preaching in Sunday school, and we get so busy uh, maybe in the nursery, maybe in the fellowship building, and, and we're, we always got improvements to the building and the grounds, and on and on and on it goes to the church. But the Lord help this church if we ever forget the importance of children. Amen? As you see here in the scripture, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, about Jesus' relationship with children. You look over in the book of Luke, you say, well, that was children that was old enough. No, no, no. Uh, it was also infants, babies, infants, that Jesus would take up and hold in his hands. And knowing this and seeing this, his church is to um, love children, be compassionate about children. Can I get an amen? amen? The church cannot be too busy. Children are not just seen and heard, or not heard, or however that is worded. That's not how we feel here. That's not we, what we believe. We always um, love to see the children come in. I talked to a, a church leader one time. I won't, it wasn't here, praise God. But it was at another church. I talked to a church leader. And I asked them, I said, well, you know, you have a van out there. Do you go and pick up children uh, to bring them to church in the mornings? That's... And they said, no, we only pick up adults. We don't pick up children. Because we have found out that when they get in the van, uh, they make a mess and get gum on the seat. <coughs> you want to talk to that church leader? I said, I pray that God will bless you in this church as he takes that old van to heaven. Amen. Come on now. We need to get realistic. We need to understand that a, a Jesus is a child's best friend. 
So here comes these disciples. They're arguing. They're prideful. And they want to say, well, who's the greatest in heaven? Now, now when I say this, please, I, I want to be the greatest in heaven. And, and you probably do too. But we're not arguing about it. We're not prideful about it, I pray. But who wouldn't want to be the greatest in heaven? But here these disciples are arguing. They have been walking and they have been arguing. Jesus heard them back there murmuring. And here comes the disciples. And they said, well, we'll bring it to the master. Who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Uh, we want to be the greatest. James and John even talked their mother in to coming and speaking with Jesus thinking that if mama asked Jesus if they could be the greatest, that he would be okay with that. Amen? These young men here, these fishermen, these disciples, are wanting to be the greatest in heaven. But pride is getting the best of them. And so here they are arguing, full of pride. And then it's amazing what Jesus does here. If you're following along with me, I'm in verse 2. I'll read the verses to you if you don't have a Bible this morning. Jesus called a little child. So here's all these grown men over here arguing about who's going to be the greatest in heaven. And Jesus walks over, or maybe someone brings a child, maybe he motions the child. But here, Jesus has this child, and he walks right into where they're all arguing. And he sits down with this child and begins to teach them. Now, let me tell you something about a historical quick one point on when you're in the area of Palestine during these times. A lot of times here in the United States we don't see this. If we prepare a meal, if we are doing something, it's for the children and the children and the children. We always put the children first. Um, but in this society, adults are first in this time frame. For you to think of a child to be first is just unimaginable. That doesn't work. The children are to be quiet. They are to sit down. They are to learn. They are to be obedient. And they're last in the family. Could you imagine that? Now here comes Jesus with a small child all of these adult men arguing and sits down with a little child. <laughs> and he says this. He called a little child sat in the midst of them and he said, Truly I say unto you, unless you be converted, unless you change your prideful attitude, unless you get your heart right, it's not really talking about salvation. He's talking about humbleness. He says, you're not going to go into my kingdom. Wait a minute. We're adults. We come first on the food chain. We're, we're adults here. And society sees us as leaders. And wait a minute, we're adults. And, and here you're bringing this little child in and telling us that unless we have a childlike Faith, a childlike attitude. You know what a child is to an adult? I'm talking about the church here. Brother and sister, let me tell you something. When you have a child in your classroom, in your church, wherever activities with child, you know what? As you believe, you see the, the sky beginning to turn and grow dark. And some of us has a barometer, so we'll go over and we like to check the, the precipitation or the needles on the humidity. Is the storm coming and different things? I love to do that in my uncle's house when I was a kid to watch those needles change. But you know what it does for us? When you have a child, that's your measuring stick with your relationship with the Lord. Did you know that? We can't get too big of a hurry. You can't be prideful. Can't be aggravated. Jesus was not. And the Bible says that he was our example. 
So we begin to see here a child when you as an adult, now I know the, those children, uh, some of them, boy, they, they'll climb the walls and, and throw things and, and not eat and not want to take a nap and want to do this and want to do that. Patience. Patience. A child is a measuring stick of your spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. If you get a prideful adult that's a church leader, man or woman, they lead something in the church. They're a leader. They're looked at at the church as a leader. And they're bold and they're prideful. Take them down in the nursery, set them in the rocking chair, and hand them a baby. You want to see how close they are to the Lord? Let the door crack open and just sit in the hallway for a little bit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, so as we, well, let's, as we go on here, a Christian should have the desire to have the same relationship with children as Jesus does. Jesus loves the little children. Uh, verse 3, we read, except you be converted. He's not talking about being saved. The disciples were already believing. Most of them was already believing in Jesus at this point. He's teaching his disciples, and I think you and I, at all times, we need to be aware of this, uh, and I think we need to understand that we need, as a believer, as a Christian, we need to be a humble person. Like Grandma used to say, eat a little bit of that humble pie before you go. Amen? If you try to walk with God in pride and self-righteousness, you'll never grasp that relationship that you want with God. However, if you come to Jesus knowing, now watch, we're talking about, I'm talking about salvation now, full of sin and in need of a Savior, you must be, now watch what Jesus is saying, you must be humble and believing have the faith of a little child to enter into his kingdom. You know, one of the favorite things I had, well, the car wasn't my favorite, but the kids were when they were little. I think Joshua came in back there. He can tell you if you ask him. I had an old green Buick, if he could remember it. And that thing had more rust and holes in it than bald tires. But I was trying to fix that thing up, and finally it blew up, and I gave it away. But one of the things that they would do when they were little, little children is it had a big hood on it. So they would start, they would lay on the windshield and run across the hood and jump. And when they did, I would just stand there and they'd go ahead and run and jump. Do you know what they believed in? <coughs> that I would put my hands up and catch them. I always did. You know, little children are so humble. They're, they're so young. They're so believing. It's easy for them to put faith in. Jesus is teaching us here, why can't you be like the little children and have that humbleness of spirit and believe in him and walk with the Lord like that? Wow, what a teaching lesson that Jesus is giving us here. Now I'm going to turn over for a couple more verses and I promise I'm going to dismiss uh, here in a moment uh, to Miss April. Uh, in Mark chapter 10, listen to these verses. You don't have to turn there. I'll read them to you. Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Listen to how Jesus and adults and children are in view here. And they brought who? I don't know. Moms, dads, I, I'm not sure. Other adults, I'm not sure. Maybe teenagers brought younger children. I'm not really sure. But they brought young children to who? Jesus. That he should touch them. And his disciples, the King James Version says rebuked, that means they disapproved of those people, whoever they were, may have been parents, bringing the, Jesus was saying, come, come, and the disciples, before the parents would come through and, and bring their children to Jesus, they would say, no, 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 you're troubling the master, no, 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 wait, stop, no, 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 this is too much, he, he, he's, he's, he's a master teacher of Israel, he's the same, he doesn't have time for children. The Lord was infuriated with that. That his disciples that's been walking down those dusty trails could not 
understand the message of how to be humble, loving, and compassionate towards children. Folks, that's what our church is. I could name names of, of every adult that's served in this church that's done something from giving a piece of candy to, to taking them to uh, concerts, to, to playing ball outside. And I thank the church that you are like that. And I praise the Lord for this church because we see the importance of children according to the Lord's word. So they, they brought children in, in the Hebrew or excuse me, in the Greek, it means they continually are bringing. So there's people lining up to bring their kids to Jesus so Jesus could touch them. And the disciples were in the line and caused an interference. And Jesus, when he saw what was going on, the Bible says he was much displeased. And he told them right there. He says, you allow the little children to come to me and don't you hinder and don't you prevent them, for such is the kingdom of God. You see, when you prevent a little child from coming to Jesus through pride or whatever we may have through in our hearts, it's the same as you standing up, Jesus says, and says, no, you're not coming into the kingdom of God. You're not coming into heaven. No, you can't come in. No, you can't come in. Jesus compared it to the same thing. Hmm. So, when we see here and that he should touch them, what does it mean? Well, you always know when the Greek always tells more detail and more truthful. I'm not saying that the word, uh, King James Version, is not truthful, but it, it has a more precise meaning. What was he doing? He was reaching up and grasping them and holding them in his arms. That's how Jesus loved, loved children. And... And then in verse 15, he says, Truly I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive. That word receive there doesn't mean uh, receiving Christ as your Savior. Uh, that's kind of a word I don't like to use. You believe in Jesus as your Savior. Amen. Uh, but he's saying, whosoever shall not receive, grasp, take a hold of the kingdom of God. If you can't grasp the kingdom of God, you say, wait a minute, are you talking about theology? What are you talking about? No. He says, whosoever shall not grasp the kingdom of God as a little child, <laughs> he's not going to enter therein. What is he talking about? Two things. In our life. Three things. In our life. As a believer, as a Christian, as a church, we are to love these children. Amen? Number two, we are to live our life as these children, Jesus says. What does that mean? In humbleness and compassion and love. I've seen the little children come up to me and, and through the years and they ask me questions about where was the dinosaurs in the Bible. Some of you adults, you got that question this morning, amen. But these children would ask things. I can't teach them a theology lesson. So I sat down and I said, well, let's talk about that. So we must take time for our children. And once again, I praise our, our church for doing this. And they do a great job of it. And I just praise the Lord for that. But also the third thing. You know what a child does? He trusts. She trusts. If you're a mom and daddy, grandma, grandpa, guardian. If you're here and you tell your child at 3 o'clock when I pick <coughs> you up from school today, I promise you I'm going to run you through McDonald's for an ice cream. What is that kid going to remind you when you pick them up from school? about that ice cream. And you know what? They're going to trust that you're going to do that. A little child is so faithful and so trusting. And you know, that's how we have to come to Christ to be saved. We have to humble ourselves because we know that we're full of sin. We know Adam and Eve fell in the garden. We know that we're full of sin and, and there dwells no good thing in us. Our self-righteousness and pride are as filthy rags, Isaiah says, and on and on. 
But if we know we get the concept that we can't come to Jesus prideful, that we must have come to Him knowing that we're broken, that we have a sin nature, but yet when we trust in Him and His Word, as a little child, you will enter into the kingdom. Jesus' words, not mine. Amazing what little children teach us. Uh, one Bible scholar said this, we tell the children to behave like adults. How many of you have ever done that before? Uh -huh. Well, the rest of you get forgiveness after the service. Amen. But Jesus tells the adults to model themselves after the children. Isn't that amazing? Verse 16, he took them up in his arms. And he put his hands on them and he blessed them. While he blessed them, he asked God for divine favor upon these children. You know, we can do that too. What do you mean? When we pray for our children in our church and our families, our homes, and when we pray for these little ones, what are you asking for? A divine favor from the Father upon the children. Lord, let them grow up and Lord, let them know you, serve you. Lord, let them be excited about you. Let them... Uh, come to church. Let them know your word and their little memory verses on and on it goes. I close here with a poem. Listen to this little poem I found. Make me, O oh Lord, a child again, so tender, frail, and small, in self-possessing nothing, and in thee possessing all. O Savior, make me small once more that downward I may grow. Amen. And in this heart of mine restore the faith of long ago. With thee may I be crucified. No longer I that lives. O Savior, crush my sinful pride by grace which pardon gives. Make me, O Lord, a child again, obedient to thy call, in self-possessing nothing, and in thee possessing all. Good to be in the Lord's house this morning. Amen? Amen. And um, 